Hey everybody, this is Tracy here to recap. Welcome to Sweetie Pie Season 4, Episode 7, which was entitled um, Family Business is Always Personal. So this is the episode that we've all been waiting for where Miss Robbie finally confronts Tim about using her brand and opening up all these different restaurants without her permission. So the show opens with Miss Robbie talking to Jan, you know, about the whole issue with Tim and letting her know that she's about to fly out to California for a book fair and that while she's out there, she's also going to talk to Tim about, you know, what he's doing. And she basically... um you know, she's fed up. And one thing I noticed about Miss Robbie, if, and you guys let me know if you agree or not, but it doesn't seem like she treats Miss Jan a little stepchildish, you know, or stepsisterish. Like she's more friendlier with Linda than she is with Jan. It just seems like she always throwing Jan, um, shade at Jan, like telling Jan that because they're not having lunch at the restaurant where Jan is the manager, that she has to pay for the meal. And I'm thinking, you're so wrong for that, Miss Robbie. So then we head out to California and Tim and Bruce are at the Inglewood location and they're putting on some finishing touches with the um, like the steam table equipment and everything and getting ready to open and Tim is saying how you know they just need to hire the staff and get them trained and he thinks that the Inglewood location is going to be really good because they're across the street from a radio station and there is a hospital nearby and then they're also up the street from where the Los Angeles Rams football team um, plays their game. So he thinks that they're going to do really good where they're at. So Tim lets um, Bruce know that Miss Robbie is coming to town and the two star, you know, joking about how Miss Robbie's never happy about anything and that um, you know, she's going to find something to complain about no matter what. And so Tim, you know, he tells Bruce that he doesn't understand why she's not happy for him and that he's doing a good thing and that, you know, the restaurants are going to be a success. So they start like bannering back and forth saying that Miss Robbie was going to complain that there were three chandeliers instead of four chandeliers and that the paint was off white instead of white and that the wooden chairs didn't have cushion but Bruce says that he knows for sure that Miss Robbie was going to love the marble floors that they put in. Over at the TJ's um, restaurant Charles you know says his goal is to keep the peace they are short staffed and Vic you know who's the fry cook says that they need to call Chloe in so I guess they haven't told, you know, the rest of the staff that Chloe has been suspended. And so Charles, you know, finally spills the beans and tells Nick that, you know, why Chloe isn't there and why they can't call her in. And so Vic is pretty much like, oh, wow, you know, but um, I'll talk to her myself and, you know, find out the reason. Charles heads back home and he, you know, talks about how Chloe has been laying on the sofa since he suspended her. And he says that, you know, she hasn't moved from that spot, you know, and he needs to get her up and motivated. And I'm thinking, how awkward must that be that you live with the person that you had to discipline on the job? And so he hates seeing her depressed. And I guess he thinks that by, you know, talking about Chef Clark in a negative way is going to help the situation. But, you know, it did seem to perk um, Chloe up real quick. And so these two, you know, they get to plotting together and talking about, you know, life in general. And Chloe lets Charles know that she really wants to return to school and confesses to him that she never received her high school diploma and that she uh, really, that's something that's really important to her and that she feels like she's a failure. You know, well, not that she feels like she's a failure. Well, deep inside, she does feel like she's a failure. That's why she's always fighting with Chef Clark. And I actually think that Chloe is jealous of Chef Clark because Chef Clark is where she wants to be as far as the restaurant industry is concerned. And so she basically says that she really needs to get her diploma because she doesn't want her daughter to know that she didn't graduate from high school. And so Charles admits that he is not a good reader and that one of the reasons he hasn't gone out, because remember he wants to do the whole acting thing, and he says that the reason he hasn't gone out for any auditions is because it will require him to read the script. And I guess he wouldn't have a problem reading the script at home, but then if he had to read from it in front of a group of people, 
that his fear of not doing well like overcomes him but i'm thinking that's where your passion overtakes everything else because you would memorize those lines to the t and make sure that you didn't have to pick that script up while you were at the um studio or wherever doing the audition as these two were talking i was thinking at least we're getting somewhere and learning like what is triggering the poor behavior and chloe says that um you know, she hates the fact that Chef Clark is always talking down to her, but she needs to understand that it isn't because Chef Clark thinks she's dumb. Chef Clark thinks she's rude and disrespectful. And Chloe, I think, is projecting her inner feelings, what she actually feels about herself, comes out when she has these angry outbursts with everybody. And I'm thinking Chef Clark probably doesn't even know that Chloe never graduated from high school. And what difference does it make if she didn't graduate from high school? Because there are a lot of people that didn't graduate from high school who are doing great in their life, great in their career. So Chloe is what's keeping her from succeeding at the restaurant, not the fact that she doesn't have a high school diploma. I think that's just something that she's internalizing within herself. So Charles, you know, he, I think Charles is kind of over the whole restaurant business. And he also knows that Chloe is on a very thin line that's about to pop. And so he wants them to work together in, you know, overcoming the things that, you know, is hindering them and try and do better together. And, you know, he reaches over and says that, you know, that Chloe is his wife and that he was glad that they were able to reveal those secrets to one another and just be, you know, open and transparent. So Miss Robbie arrives in um, LA and like I say, she's there for the LA book festival and or book fair. And this is like a really big event. I mean, I wouldn't mind um, going out there one year and selling my books, but it's also very um, expensive like for a person who, if you don't have like a publisher backing you and getting you a spot there, it is very expensive to participate. And so like I said, she's there. Um, so she's there promoting her well, at the time, it would have been her new cookbook, but it's been out for over a year now. And it's called Sweetie Pie's Cookbook, um, Soulful Southern Recipes from My Family to Yours. And she's basically decided to make a book um, with all of her family's um, recipes so that the youngins, the younger generation coming up, will have a guide on how to cook um, Southern food. Because, you know, kids nowadays don't cook. And so we can very well see that um, Southern food could um, fade away, you know, and maybe become a delicacy because nobody's going to know how to cook it. So there are people lined up, you know, for the books and for Miss Robbie to do her cooking demonstration. And she has um, Wendell, and I can't remember if Wendell played on the Shanice and um, Flex show or if he's from the Kim Whitley show, but he's a little petite, dark-skinned guy with the thick... Um, Nick Ashford uh, mustache and then the long straight hair like Nick Ashford used to <laughs> wear his hair. And so he's sort of like her hype man, you know, getting people over to the table and, you know, helping her, you know, move things along. And so um, there's a cooking demonstration, like I say, and she's cooking um, salmon crochet, cro and she's cooking salmon. <laughs> I'm so focused on not pronouncing the L in salmon that um, I'm messing up the croquets, croquettes. Salmon, salmon croquettes. So Miss Robbie says that um, she cooks from sight and taste, not from looking at the recipe. The only problem is she has another lady there actually cooking the food while she's talking about it. So she's telling the lady, you know, put a little bit of this and a little bit of that and put this and that. And the lady is like, okay, but this is your recipe. So, you know, and she's like, well, put more, put more. And I'm thinking, Miss Robbie, you maybe should have had her like test the little cooking demonstration before you got out there in front of the people. But everybody said that it was good. Then we move on to Tim and Jennifer. And I can't believe that uh, Tim didn't come and support his mom at that LA book fair because they are in LA, right? So that was unexcusable. Um, Tim and Charles, both of y'all should have been there. So Tim and Jennifer are meeting with Danielle to discuss um, how she'll fit into Tim's new business, Live Forever. And I'm just thinking, wait till Miss uh, Robbie found out about that business and how Tim done spent all her money, you know, buying all that office equipment and the building and everything else. And so they're going to help um, Jennifer rebuild her website, which is called classygirlswardrobe.com. And I did go out and look at the site. And Jennifer has, a, you know, some cute little pieces out there. Um, it was one bodysuit in particular that I thought was real pretty, but... Um, 
think I'm kind of beyond the bodysuit. You know, I think you just have to have that slim waist and everything to do the bodysuit. So probably won't be ordering that. Danielle looks, you know, really excited and, you know, eager to learn. And she's telling, you know, Tim and Jennifer that she thinks that, you know, she could help, you know, help, help her with the website, help her with the brand and everything. And then when Tim dropped the bomb and said that um, Jennifer was his girlfriend or that they were dating, um, Danielle's whole disposition changed. So I don't know if her and Tim used to date before or she was just shocked that Jennifer was his girlfriend or what was going on, but there definitely was a shift in the atmosphere in that moment. But then, you know, Danielle recovers and she basically tells Tim that all this is fine and good and I can do the social media, I can help her with the website and all of that, but we need to talk about money and talk about pay. And Tim, you know, pretends like he got a text and he needs to get up and leave. And Danielle's like, mm-mm, because see, he'll try and make me Jennifer's uh, personal assistant, but I'm not here for that. So we need to get the details kinked out and how much I am going to be making. So uh, Danielle ain't as dumb as they think she is. It's Chloe's first day back at the restaurant and she's already, you know, on the defense. And one of the cooks, um, a guy named Daniel, starts complaining about how, you know, he's told to make the macaroni and cheese one way. And then the next time somebody else tells him to make it another way. And so Chef Clark hears, hears him talking to Chloe about it. So she comes in and she's like, you know, Daniel, however I told you, I'm the only one that matters when it comes to cooking this food. What I told you to do is how it's supposed to do. So then Chloe jumps in and she's just like, you know, yelling and carrying on about how, you know, there's no consistency and she's a manager and she's talking to her employee and Clark, um, Chef Clark, you know, why are you butting into our conversation and, you know, listen to what the employee is saying. I mean, she's just going on and on and on and Chef Clark is trying to explain that I'm the one that's in charge of the recipes. I gave him a recipe that will work best and he needs to follow that recipe. And then Chloe's like, well, nobody's following the recipe. That's what he's saying. Why don't you listen? It's, I mean, just combative and arguing and carrying on. I'm like, Lord Jesus, somebody help this girl. And so Shell Clark, you know, she basically walks out to go call Tim and let Tim know that um, this isn't working with Chloe and she doesn't see it getting better. You know, and Chloe, you know, she's really creating a hostile work environment and she doesn't even realize it. And I'm thinking, you know, you keep talking about you're a manager, which I don't understand how, but a manager doesn't challenge another manager and engage the subordinates into their discussion. And I just think it's time for um, Chloe to head back to St. Louis. We move over to Miss Robbie's hotel and she's invited one of her friends to come visit and it's a lady named Stephanie and I guess they used to sing together, maybe not for Ike and Tina, but I think she said they worked on a, a um, album that Frank Sinatra did. And so she's invited her over to tell her about, you know, her um, goals of releasing this CD. And she wants to know if Stephanie would be interested in being a producer um, on the songs and if she can help her find some, you know, really good live musicians out there in that area, you know, she doesn't want to sing along with the track. She wants everything to be real like they used to do it back in the day when music was good. And so Stephanie says she thinks it's a great idea and Miss Robbie has some cassette tapes and so she needed help from Stephanie on how to play the cassettes in some gadget that she had. But Stephanie was able to help her and said that she was really excited and looking forward to working with Miss Robbie on the project. Finally, Miss Robbie makes it over to the Inglewood location and she walks in and she's trying to be positive and she says that it looks really different from the other restaurants, but it's very nice and she likes, you know, what everything that Tim has done, but it doesn't excuse the fact that he's opening up the restaurants without her approval. So, you know, Tim is crazy and he starts joking about, you know, spending his mom's money like that's okay. And I'm thinking that's part of the problem. So not only are you using her brand, but you're using her money too. And it just ain't right, Tim. It ain't going to end good for you because God don't like ugly. So Tim thought he had gotten a good deal on these big um, industrial sized pots. And Miss Robbie look, um, took one look at those pots and told him that they were cheap. You know, that that was why he got a good price on them because they're only going to last about a month, and, you know, with high volume cooking. And so Tim is looking, you know, like, oh man, you know, 
but this is just one thing, but then Ms. Robbie's trying to explain to him that with her expertise in the building, she can look at a pot and know it's not worth anything, whereas Tim doesn't understand that and how she's looking at the restaurant and the money that he spent on putting in marble floors and that was money you know, instead of doing marble floors, maybe do vinyl floors or just, you know, regular ceramic tile. And then you can take that money and spend it on other things that are more important. But she says Tim doesn't, you know, seem to grasp any of that. And Tim seems to really miss the point about, you know, expanding the brand, but being open and honest with his mom. And so Ms. Robbie realizes that Tim doesn't value her opinion and that she will need to um, slow him down some kind of way, you know, because that's, it's her business also. It's really her business that she brought him in. And I guess until she hands the business over to him, that he still has to go through her, you know, before making decisions. One of the things that Ms. Robbie pointed out to Tim was that there really isn't a market in that area for soul food. So essentially what he's doing by opening all these restaurants is that he's creating his own competition, which will eventually hurt the restaurants because now people are trying to decide, well, am I going to go to TJ's or am I going to go to Inglewood when they're basically selling the same food? And then also, I don't think Miss Robbie knows about that other restaurant that Tim is opening the, you know, the real upscale one that's going to be serving brunch and all this stuff. Now, I can't wait till she find out about that one. Then Tim heads over to TJ's where he has to deal with Chloe. And so she's trying to justify her behavior like she has no clue what her part in everything is. And I'm starting to think that maybe she doesn't. And so Tim starts going down the list of all the people back in St. Louis that Chloe has had an issue with. And then Chloe starts trying to justify, you know, well, I had a fight with Miss Ann because she cussed me out and was disrespectful. And then I had an argument. So it was like she's not willing to take responsibility in anything that she's doing and so Tim is pretty much like you know trying to talk over her and get her to be quiet but she's not trying to be quiet at all and then finally she tells Tim well I'll let you talk and then I'll talk and Tim is like no girl I'm here to talk to you and you need to be quiet and listen but she can't shut up like she can't get out of her own way and so Tim, you know, he pretty much tells her that he's going to send her back to St. Louis, that he's done arguing with her. And he just, you know, she wouldn't shut up. She's crying. She's cursing. She's yelling. And then finally, Tim just walked away like, girl, bye. I can't deal with you. Then we head back to um, St. Louis and Miss Robbie and Jan, you know, they're at the Hamburger Heaven location and they're discussing, you know, what all needs to be done, you know, to get the place, you know, in order. And she fills her in, you know, on her trip to California. So then the two decide to head over to the restaurant that Linda manages. And y'all know Tim done opened a bunch of restaurants in St. Louis. So I can't keep up with all of them either. So I don't know which restaurant. Maybe it was the Upper Crust. Or does Miss Robbie do the Upper Crust? Not sure. But anyway, they all sit down to talk and Miss Robbie, you know, wants to let them know about Tim and the whole, you know, opening the restaurant situation. And she tells them that, you know, she needs to protect her brand at the same time that Tim is trying to build his own brand. But the problem is that he's using her name and her money to do it and that she has to be firm with Tim and let Tim know that she's not playing with him. So, of course, Jan and Linda, you know, they don't want her to file a lawsuit against Tim and they're encouraging her to, you know, talk to Tim. And so she's letting them know, well, I just tried to talk to him, but he wasn't listening to me or trying to hear anything that I had to say. And he's just going about his business, you know, like she has to do something to stop him in his tracks. And so she thinks that the lawsuit is what it's going to take. In the confessional, you know, Linda, she looked like she on the verge of tears. And she's basically saying that the business is what, you know, has kept the family together all these years. And that Miss Robbie, you know, she built the business for the family. And she would hate to see that it be, you know, for the business to turn out and tear the family apart. And that she wishes that there was another way that they could remedy the problem. But then she also understands from a business point of view that what Tim is doing is wrong and that Miss Robbie's within her rights to, you know, try to get him to stop opening the businesses. And I think what's sad about the whole thing is I don't think Miss Robbie is like against Tim opening the business. I think her issue is the fact that he's doing it in such a disrespectful and reckless manner. Like he doesn't care what she's saying. 
and telling him, and she's the one with all the expertise. And it's like, he's just not grasping it or willing to respect that. So what do you all think? Um, should Miss Robbie sue Tim? Um, is Tim taking advantage of the situation by disregarding Miss Robbie's concerns? Um, let me know what you think below. Rate the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And until the next time, take care. Bye-bye.